Watermelon cantaloupe, watermelon cantaloupe, watermelon cantaloupe, watermelon cantaloupe. Back to one. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 111, episode 111 of Low Tide, the official program for Rude Planet, and I'm your host. So, what's on the plate this week? Uh, oh man, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was I was watch I was watching Breaking Bad this week. It's been like the, it's like the first time I've seen it since it came out. You know, when it first broadcast, and you know it's it's held up pretty well. You know, and it's like after coming off of that shit, the uh, Sons of Anarchy. You know, it's like I had um, I had uh, one of the things I noticed about like Sons of Anarchy, for example. You know. Uh, <laughs> Most of the episodes, you know, like re the formula of the show, of, of the episodes, often involve like some sort of hijinks, just to you know, like allow for action set pieces to happen in every episode. So it's whether you know they're like chasing you know some drug dealer or another gang member or some other shit. You know, it's always like a chase or a shootout or a murder. You know, and oftentimes these things have like no real bearing on like the overall you know story it's just something to like give action per episode and it's like really you know like it's one of those things that you know like really brought that show down you know like when i say that you know sons of anarchy is like really tra is really a trash show it's because of reasons like that you know it, it it just it just you know focused on like all the action aspect you know and, and it was just you know lazy in a lot of ways and then you compare it to its contemporary you know breaking bad which would have like some hijinks and stuff you know it's like uh uh, what'd you have? Like the stealing of the methylamine or the magnets. Um, you know, there's, there's hijinks that happen throughout that show. But by and large, the those scenes served the larger story and like the largest. It was like really co. It's a really one of the reasons why people consider it to be like one of the best shows ever. And, you know, it's like, I really appreciate that show, but one of the reasons why people consider it a masterpiece is that it's, you know, very coherent, very tight, and there's, like, no fat on it. You know, something like Sons of Anarchy is, like, the exact opposite of that. You know, so... Anyway, I'm going off on that. Um, 
everybody's getting upset over Chris Pratt being in the Super Mario Brothers as Mario. Um, Jesus, it's, a, it's, it's going to be an animated film that nobody will watch unless they got kids. And it's just a branded thing. It's like, oh, we know you like this thing. We're going to take your money. And everybody's like, woohoo, I could get t-shirts and shit. Um, it's like, they're all upset because Chris Pratt's in it. You know, he, he, he eats farm to table. You know, I'm like, he doesn't look like Mario. But it's a fucking animated film. You know, the, that, the movie has a bigger problem in the fact that it has, like, fucking Seth Rogen in it. Nobody wants Seth Rogen anymore. Just, to, you know, we don't need, we don't need celebrities to voice movies anymore we never needed it in the first place like it only like really worked like twice you know it's like robin williams as the genie in, Al in aladdin and you know the cast of toy story that's like oh we're gonna get more butts in the sea if we get you know fucking chris pratt and joe Ro seth rogan joe rogan joe rogan now that'd be one thing <laughs> like, seth rogan and fucking super mario Jeez, no. Back in the day, they had voice actors, people who did that for a living. You know, it's like they've all been dis they've all been displaced. You know, with oh, we're gonna use the celebrity of the day. You know, we're gonna like channel Nicki Minaj and Cardi B and uh, the Cash Me Outside girl. You know, we don't need celebrities to voice animated films or cartoons or anything like that voice actors people who do this sort of shit professionally you know the there's more of a craft to it, it you know the, i have like the uh you know i've i have like a couple animated films and you know it's like they'll have like who the fuck was it like kristen dunce or some shit it's like kiki's delivery service or whatever who cares? It's like it's like Phil Hartman. He did he did the voice of the cat, you know. And it's like oh god, he's gone. We lost Norm Macdonald too. God, you know like the real greats, the people who actually should be celebrities. You know they're all gone. There's like no celebrities anymore. I don't want to know who the fuck this guy is, let alone who this guy is. So, oh god, god, jeez, oh god. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get, we're gonna get this Seth Rogen in another movie. We'll bring on Jess Franco and Patton Oswalt as well. Oh my. It's just, we gotta, it's like a celebrity. Ooh, we gotta get celebrities in this. Ooh, ooh, just, just look at that, look at their Twitter. Ooh, we need to get them on this thing. God, stop, stop. And now we don't even have, it's like celebrities are dead. It's like what I mentioned last week, you know. It's like now they're not even hiring celebrities anymore. We're going to go after ticks, tick, 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 stars. Oh, God. God damn it. That's why I don't watch hardly anything new anymore. I don't watch new movies anymore. It's like I'm very comfortable watching things I've already watched. You know, I, watching... It, we'll talk more about this on Friday. I'm going. To, I think I'm going to do a live show on Friday to do the giveaway. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about that because I got some future plans for the show, uh, for the channel, and I'm trying to figure shit out. So we'll talk about that on Friday. Let's take a quick break, and I'll be right back. And the parasite of it all, the scavenger. The great American maggot. <laughs> so I have decided I'm going to work work on rebuilding my uh, book collection you know when I had moved here to Arizona back in 2001 
you know, like, I'm one of the things I had to get rid of. I got rid of my comic collection, and I got rid of my book collection. And, like, you know, it's like I've got, you know, completely redone my, my, uh, completely redid my uh, comic collection. And <laughs> I've done so in spades. But, you know, my book collection, you know, I had, like, a first edition collection and things like that. And I just couldn't bring them. I couldn't bring them here, you know, so I decided I was going to rebuild my book collection. And, like, <laughs> this is, like, an example of one that I've probably owned over the years. I've probably owned this, like, a dozen times. And I haven't read these since college. But, like, I, you know, it's, like, one of the things that, you know, was an influence on bad things, major influence on bad things, was Robert Anton Wilson. And, I haven't read his book since college, really. So, like, I'm, I've decided I'm gonna like rebuild uh, my collection. This is gonna be turn. I meant, I know I mentioned this on the show last year because they announced that they were gonna do an Illuminatus uh, TV series, and people, you know, like modern equivalent would be like Department of Truth or whatever. But like this was, uh, <laughs> you know, you get the you get one of those books in your life, you know, and like. You, it's like when you get into like high school or you know college and you're like yeah I'm gonna base my entire personality off of that you know so like I had like in, in a short span of time like I had like read the Fountainhead and the Illuminatus trilogy and so like I based my entire life on being like a Discordian objectivist and so but like um, this book left a huge impact on me and um, you know, I had made several homages to it of it uh, to it in, in bad things. So, you know, I've wanted to get another copy. I keep getting copies of it, and I keep selling them. And it's like, no, I would just want it. There's a term for having like too many books. You know, uh, just being surrounded by knowledge. You know, even if you know you're never going to read them, it's sort of like a motivator. And there's like a term for that, and I forget what it is. But, you know, it's like, I've read that years and years ago, and I want to revisit it again. And, you know, a lot of this is to, you know, like, jumpstart my creativity again. But, um, yeah, I got, uh, I don't know, some promotional shit in here. But I'll get, I'll get to, I'll get to the cape shit stuff here in a minute. Hello Fresh, 14 free meals. There. Uh, um, Cosmic Trigger Volume 2. I already have a copy of Volume 1. And this is, you know, more Robert Anton Wilson. But, yeah, I'm, I'm slowly rebuilding my, my book collection. Because I just need to surround myself in things that, you know, used to be important to me. So, you know, so, like, that's kind of where I'm at. So... Is this more Wilson here? I think it is. I don't think it is. Yeah. This is one of those lesser ones. No, no, it's not. I have a copy of Schrodinger's Cat somewhere. I just don't know where it is. So I got another one. So Schrodinger's Cat by Robert Anton Wilson. <sighs> this book right here is a mind fuck. And like, uh, <laughs> it's um there have been many times where like I've started this book and I just you know like just can't you know control myself and I have to stop but like um yeah you know I I, I need to I, I finished it once years and years ago and I want to give another college try to it with a more mature brain to uh see exactly what I've done here. I got several more books here in the garage. I got several more books here in the garage, but like, um, yeah, some William S. Burroughs and Raymond Chandler and some other shit. So, yeah, uh, I am, come on. Yeah. So, to round out the Wilson collection, is uh, Masks of the Illuminati. 
So that is that. Yeah, I was hoping that wouldn't be it uh, all Wilson. I was like, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I finally got another copy of Naked Lunch and Clockwork Orange. Got like two copies of Clockwork Orange, but I bought another one. Um, yeah, so what are we doing here today? Let's do the thumbnail first. Ooh. I have an A-OK. -okay. I got an A-OK -okay from Jose of uh, Spidey's Powdered Tumblers. He just, uh, he's been supporting the channel recently and I've seen some of his work, you know, on other channels. And he was a recent winner of my monthly giveaways too. And uh, he said he wanted to send me something and it just thrills me, man. You know, it's like, I never beg for anything, but like, I love it when, you know, people d decide they want to send me something out of the blue. You know, I want to make up for that here in the future. And I got some plans. I got some plans. But in the meantime, you know, like, I'm just, I'm just excited. He's been, you know, a really good supporter of the channel. And, and uh, really want to, what do we have here? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do we have here? Um, holy shit. So, okay, we got some stuff in here. Um, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we have? Is there? So we got some Spidey powdered tumblers uh, pens here. And then we have, uh, I think something fell on the floor. I'll check here in a minute. Um, Spidey Powders Tumblers uh, uh, sticker and that. And um, yeah. Did something fall on the floor? No, I don't think so. Anyway, he had, uh, he had emailed me out of the blue and said, you know, he wanted to send me something. And, uh, I have no idea what I'm, what I'm getting into here. This is intriguing. I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm really intrigued here. So, yeah, man, let's... Oh, thanks for the bubble wrap, by the way. I got some of the big, thick bubble wrap, but like the smaller bubble wrap, I've just about run out of. So like that is definitely... I think he sent me a slab. I think he sent me a slab. Um, this is gonna kick ass, whatever it is. So um, let me just take this cardboard off. And we'll see what we got going on here. So what do we have? What do we have? Are you ready? What is it? Oh! Yes! I have five copies of this. I have five copies of this, but that is great. Thank you. Yeah, he's got a note on here was going through slabs and ran into these. I had gotten a few of them uh, due to movie release. Well, you know how that went. Hope you don't have it graded. If you do, feel free to pay it forward. I don't have it graded. That is awesome. This was the high, one of the highlights. This was one of the highlights of my collecting back in the 90s. I walked into my love for Valiant started here, and I walked into, uh, oh man, I walked into, uh, I walked into a comic book store, and I'm telling you, there was nothing else that looked like this on the shelf. Absolutely nothing else that looked like this on the shelf. That is, uh, and um, yeah. I started collecting Valiant. You know, that was back then they started, you know, like, you couldn't really buy stuff off the shelf on New Comic Book Day at, you know, cover price. Everything was marked up back then. We're starting to see that again. And, um, 
Valiant was blowing up in price, mainly due because like Wizard Magazine was hyping the hell out of them. But like, uh, you know, the uh, can, thank you. The um, uh, Wizard was hyping the hell out of Valiant, and like a lot of them were like blowing up in value, but like, you know, by and large, you know, I got burned out on uh, Marvel pretty quickly around that time because everything had to look like Rob Liefeld. Everything had to look like Jim Lee. And, uh, yeah, man, other than, like, Lobo and a few things, I had, like, you know, DC was also kind of that. So I, like, was, like, going really indie heavy. And that's, like, my, my love affair with Valiant began with this book. So, like, I'm really stoked to have this. Thank you so much. Yeah, I need, when I expand this wall, I need to, like, you know, put up a, a slab display. Because I got, like, that Guar book over there, and I got the Rye. That's just awesome. So, thank you so much. Yeah, the recent Rye from um, the 2016, the 2016 run of uh, Rye or whatever, was really good. It was, like, uh, you know, as far as, like, modern Valiant goes, it was, like, really, like, just great sci-fi. It, it, it's just really, really great sci-fi. So I just, Rye was one of my favorite series too. This is, man, this is what I'm talking about. Thank you so much, man. That really, that really makes, that really makes my entire week. <laughs> you really made my entire week. Okay, um, I'll put his uh, information in my, uh, in the uh, description below. I am doing a giveaway this month. Like usual, I am giving away James Tinian the Fourth's Wind Number One First Printing. I am giving that away. God, at the end of the week, maybe. You know, a week from Mon uh, a week, maybe Monday. I don't know. Sometime in the upcoming weekend, I will be doing that giveaway. And uh, yeah, and I'm still doing the 500 subscriber giveaway. I'm going to be giving away. For that, uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 55, the Patrick Gleason Virgin variant, signed with certificate of authenticity, limited to 2,400 copies. <laughs> what I'm doing for to do for that giveaway entry, I've not decided that yet. I figure I'll figure that out closer to 450. But for the monthly giveaways, the rules are: be subscribed. Leave a comment on a uh, September video and be a U.S. resident or have arrangements. Oh, man. Thank you. That is awesome. That is awesome because this would be the kind of thing, this is the kind of thing, you know, I'd walk into a store or a comic book convention and it's like, yeah, do I need, uh, do I need some slabbed uh, valiant? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And unlike Stevie, this will remain intact. So thank you very much. So um, I can't beat that. Cannot beat that. Okay, so that's that. Um, I broke one of the cardinal rules of this channel, and I ordered a torpedo box. So I should have a torpedo box for next week's channel. Huh. How about that? What are you gonna do, start buying boxed heroes again? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, thank you, Jose, that is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I will see everybody for a live stream this weekend and then uh, next week, we'll see where things go. Maybe, maybe Torpedo have gotten their shit together. So anyway, I'll see you soon.